Hi, welcome to New Heights Artist Development Series, sponsored by the City of Santa Clarita. Today's focus will be on helping artists and crafters place their art and their unique handmade items into film, which includes TV shows, commercials, movies, web-based content as well. My name is Janine Cooper Ayers, and I've worked in the film industry now for over 30 years, which is crazy because I'm only 28 years old. But seriously, I've learned a few things along the way, and I would love to show you what I've learned and give you some tips on how you too can place your art into films and, uh, and make a little money too, doing what you love. Speaking of love, you're going to hear that word a lot in the coming moments here with me. And I didn't realize it, but love has a lot to do with making money with your art. And I'll tell you what I mean if you come along with me. I began painting back in high school up in San Jose, and I have been painting ever since. I've painted probably over 400 paintings. I've sold over 300. And the reason why I sell them is because I don't sell them for very much, but I just love for people to have my art. So I, I, I sell them on a sliding scale. I love painting aliens. I love painting abstracts. I love painting animals because I love them so much. I've worked for Walt Disney Studios. Here's a float that I helped paint for Disneyland down in Buena Park. And I worked for Universal Studios. Here's a stage that I helped paint with about 10 other artists. We brought those pieces in and reassembled them, worked some night shifts for that. And this is Dudley Do-Right's horse that I airbrushed for Universal Studios Orlando. Did you know that Dudley's horse was named horse? I never really planned to work in the film industry. I moved to Los Angeles in 1986 to pursue a musical dream, to be a bass player and a singer-songwriter, and I'm still pursuing that dream now. But I came upon a movie studio while I was on a bike ride when I was living in Venice near the beach, and I saw a painter, and they were painting the facade of a castle. And I stopped my bike, I asked him what he was doing, and he said he was working on a Roger Corman movie. So I said, hey, I'd like to do that too. And I ended up interning for a few days and then they started paying me. It was called Time Trackers. And I worked on that movie for Roger Corman and then I worked on a few more. And uh, Roger Corman is quite an interesting man. Uh, 94 years old, still alive, born in Detroit like me. He's known as the king of the B movies because he's made over 300 of them over the years. And he's uh, discovered actors like Robert De Niro and Jack Nicholson, Sylvester Stallone. He's given directors like Francis Ford Coppola, Ron Howard, James Cameron, Martin Scorsese, and Jonathan Demme their start. I didn't appreciate it at the time, but looking back, I sure am glad I got to meet him and work for him. And I'm sure I saw dozens of Roger Corman movies when I was a kid back in Michigan watching Sir Graves Gasly on Saturday afternoons. Uh, little did I know that when I grew up I would end up working uh, for the creator of many of those movies. They definitely influenced my own art since I enjoy painting moody scenes and alien characters and landscapes. It was around that time also where I had my first art exhibit up at the Lemley Theater in Santa Monica. They kept my work on their walls for about six months. I sold about 30 paintings. I couldn't believe it. While working on the movie Hollywood Boulevard 2, I was asked to paint some signs. I had never painted signs before, especially something this large. I remember cutting out those letters at three in the morning and thinking, what am I doing? I can't do this. But Roger Corman loved a good deal and <laughs> he didn't have to pay me much for that. Went on to work on several other projects, doing murals and backdrops and more signs. And then I found out that the Doors movie was starting up in Santa Monica. So I went to the production office and introduced myself to the art director. And she told me that she could use some help creating sketches and doodles for notebooks that would be attributed to Jim Morrison. Here are some of my sketches that made it into the movie. And one day she led me into Oliver Stone's office, which was very surreal, and he told me a little bit more of what he had in mind. After I was finished doing those sketches, I was put to work doing other things for the movie, some sign painting and working in the set decorating department. 
I kept one of my check stubs as a souvenir. After that job was over, it was time to find a new adventure. I loved the show, The Wonder Years. So I knocked on the door of the production office in Culver City and told them what I did. And they put me to work for nearly two years. And I became the on-call scenic artist set decorator for that show. And I went on then to work on more um, murals and backdrops and signs. And I worked in scenic shops, and I even helped to paint a mural on the front of a house in the Hollywood Hills. But the work was very physically demanding, as you can see here. <laughs> After a few more years of doing physical labor, I realized I needed a break. I had just moved up to the Santa Clarita Valley. So I took a temp job at City Hall, and I ended up working there for a while. And I was actually part of a mentoring program. I had a 13-year-old girl that I was mentoring, and she loved the X-Files as much as I did. This gave me an idea. I wrote a letter to the assistant of the creator of the show, Chris Carter, asking if he might be interested in exchanging one of my paintings for an afternoon on the set. I showed some examples of my artwork, and next thing I knew, we were invited down to 20th Century Fox. We met Chris Carter and David Duchovny, and it was just a magical afternoon on the set. Here's the painting that I gave to Chris Carter. I've always loved the mystery of who we share this universe with, and I think that's why I love to paint aliens. So by now you may be noticing a pattern, and I wasn't even conscious of this when I was doing it, but I loved the doors and Oliver Stone. I loved the Wonder Years, and I loved the X-Files. And I followed that path of love to their production offices, and it led me to some work. When I think of artists who put love into their work, I think of Wyland, also from Detroit, and I think of the love that he puts into all that he does. He loves our planet, he loves whales, he loves wildlife, and it shows in his work. And he doesn't think small either when you look at those murals. So create your own unique and recognizable style. I think of the Colombian artist Fernando Botero, who is so unique and so fun and whimsical with his art, and you know it's his when you see it. You know, art directors can go into a prop house and they can find generic photos and prints and paintings of landscapes and flowers and vases. So it's up to you to come up with your own original and unique style that they will remember. Paint what you love and love what you paint. Here are a few things that I love to paint. After working in city government for a while, I had to admit that I really missed working with paintbrush in hand. So I went back to scenic painting and I worked for Universal Studios on Animal Planet. And then I also uh, worked on Boogie Nights, but I had an anxiety attack one night driving home from that job. And I realized I had to stop painting. A friend of mine suggested that I go into background acting. And I'd always loved actresses like Carol Burnett and Mary Tyler Moore. Never thought I could actually be an actress, but background acting I could handle. The 
the um, pressure is not on for learning lines. You're still on the set. So I went into acting and I'm actually a member of the Screen Actors Guild now and I've worked on such really cool, really cool projects. And those projects actually have sort of segued me back into my art in a weird way because I would meet people on the set and uh, sometimes I've sold paintings to actors and people I've worked with. And uh, it's just been a really, a really good chapter. The Rookie was the last show that I worked on before the coronavirus hit and closed everything down. One day when I was working on the TV show Friends, there I am behind Phoebe, I discovered that some friends of mine from Warren, Michigan were working in the uh, set decorating department there. I gave them some of my art magnets and they put them on the refrigerators of two of the uh, apartment sets. So even now when I watch the show, I can see my art magnets on the refrigerators and it's always fun to see them there. From that point on, I would always bring my magnets with me and I gave them to the set decorator for NCIS and I've seen my magnets on that show and, and Everybody Loves Raymond and On Six Feet Under. I would always have my phone number on the back of the magnets and when I worked on the TV show The Medium, they did call me back and I worked on some reproductions of Van Gogh's Starry Night and Whistler's Mother, painted by the American-born painter James McNeil Whistler in 1871. Not long after that, I had heard that the TV show According to Jim was going to be doing a scene at a UFO Expo type event. And since I had actually done some of those events, I knew how to set up a booth, so I contacted the art director and here's Jim Belushi here um, in front of the booth that I created for them. And they bought some things from me and they rented some artwork too. And they even paid me. It's always nice to get paid to do what you love. One of my most recent jobs has been to help a professional animation artist paint these animation cells for the Charles Schultz estate. And we did dozens of them to be sold in art galleries. And it was really a dream come true for me because I always wanted to work in animation and paint cells the old-fashioned way. And I was able to do that. But enough about me. <laughs> I want to help you get your art into films and I want to show you a few ways in which you can do it. So now it's time for you to think about what you have to offer and what you enjoy doing what you love to create, and how you might be able to introduce it to someone in the film industry. Perhaps it's handmade jewelry. My mom did that at the age of 90. She learned how to do that. Or maybe it's mosaics, like my friend Michael. Or maybe it's uh, handmade glass. My sister Donna designed that and created it. Or perhaps you enjoy making furniture or doing woodwork. Or maybe you do needlepoint or crochet or embroidery. This is one of my mom's pieces. And remember that your artwork can be transferred onto clothing as well, like I did. That's my sister modeling one of my designs. And keep in mind that if you have a unique vehicle like a Tesla or this cool old hippie van, you could rent it to be used in a movie or on a TV show and make some good money. And of course, face masks are, will be in big demand on film sets. My friends Krista and Nicole made these. Maybe you love to paint on rocks like I do. And I could see a set decorator wanting to have a collection of some just in case they're needed for an outdoor scene in someone's garden. Or maybe you have a living work of art, like a pony or a pig or a dog, a well-behaved dog, or a cat, like Rose, and you just know that they would be a movie star if they could just be discovered. 
So I hope some of these ideas have started the wheels turning for you and given you some inspiration. Remember to follow the path of love. I know it sounds corny, but it's true. When you do what you love, you create amazing things. And remember, ask and ye shall receive. And more specifically, ask Google and you shall receive. You can find out things like what movies are going into production, or you can find a list of production designers or set decorators. You could contact them. You can send an email their way or even a text message and show them images of what you do, and you can let them know who you are. Uh, but you don't want to become a pest, so you just put it out there, and if it's not meant to be, you move on. You know, if I had a dollar for every time I've been rejected or every failure that I've had with my art and my music and even with my acting, I'd be a millionaire. I mean, oh my gosh, I've experienced a lot of rejections. But you just have to keep on keeping on. Don't give up. Don't take it personally. Each time you have a failure, it just makes you stronger. That's the way you need to feel about it. And besides, as long as you're doing what you love, you're already a success. I thought I would end with some online resources that I found that might be helpful. Arts for LA is a really good resource for job listings. BuiltinLA.com is another good website you might want to check out. Here's the website for the Art Directors Guild. And a resource that I've used plenty of times. This is the Set Decorators Guild website. And you can go to centralcasting.com for more information about background acting. This page has some phone numbers for prop houses and scenery shops. Here's another page that gives you some information for trade shows and props that could be used in trade shows and another scenery shop and a fabrication uh, company for model making. And here's another page with some scenic shop phone numbers and contact information, prop houses. I do recognize scenic highlights because I worked for them for about three years and they kept me very busy working on game shows and TV shows and movies and commercials and amusement park jobs, trade shows. Ah, uh, what a workout that was, going up and down ladders and scaffolding almost every day. So I think that does it. Uh, thank you so much for coming along with me and letting me teach you a little bit about what I've learned. Uh, thank you, City of Santa Clarita, for this New Heights series. Um, Jeff Barber, thanks for inviting me to speak. And, uh, and if you like these presentations, don't forget to press the like button on Facebook. Better yet, press the love button. And remember, just love what you do and you're gonna do great things. You're gonna create great things if you just infuse that good energy into what you do. Oh, and here's my contact information. If you have any questions, I'd be glad to help in any way that I can. Thanks. Hi, my name is Nick Goodman. I have been an art director, production designer in Los Angeles for over 20 years. I have done music videos, video games, some features, but mostly TV commercials, hundreds of TV commercials. And I'm going to talk about the various types of art on a film set and how to go about getting your art whatever format it is, used on a film set. Now there are many types of art on a set, ranging from large backings to very small matchbook covers. In backings can range from a 10 or 12 foot backyard scene that could be used outside a kitchen window, 
to a hundred foot or more depiction of a cityscape, a forest, mountain scenery, ocean, sky, anything and everything. Now, traditionally, these have been painted on canvas, but for many years now, film shoots have been using photographic back backings. They're crisper, cleaner, a better image, and they're much easier to light. The canvas backings are still in use, though, especially for theatre productions. High school and community theatre groups still use canvas backdrops, and while there are a great many available to rent, new ones are needed and being created all the time. Next size down are murals. Anything from a photo image of a tranquil lake scene or a forest for a den to paintings of nursery rhyme characters, animals and flowers, etc. for a children's nursery. Then there's wallpaper. Now there's thousands of patterns of wallpaper in existence, but often an original image is needed. That has to be created, designed, laid out in a repeatable pattern, and printed as wallpaper. Most common, though, is what I'm going to call wall art. Paintings, oils, acrylic, watercolours, photographs, black and white, colour, sepia tone, multimedia, collages, posters, and of course sculpture of every size. All of this comes in every imaginable size, colour, shape, representational, abstract, specific, vague, there's no limit. It's art. Uh, even smaller images sometimes needed. Uh, book covers, magazines, packages, even matchbooks. But no matter what size it is, what format it's in, what shape, colour, everything on a film set has to be cleared. You can't have a lawyer calling up the production company and saying the image in your film is copyrighted and you do not have permission to use it. Production companies will almost always want a release. If you own the image, you give the, pro the production company the right to display that image. Now, there are lots of different ways that negotiation can be done. Images can be loaned for one specific use, or you can sell the image for, to the, and the rights to use it. Usually, if it's a TV show the, with multiple episodes, the production company will want to own the image outright. They might want to do reruns. They want to make add episodes, seasons, it's better for them to own the image with one negotiation rather than revisiting a new contract every time. So broadly speaking, there are two kinds of art on a film set. Let's start with background art. This is part of the decor of the set. It matches the style, the period, the overall look, the colour, the furnishings. Uh, it doesn't stand out in a good or bad way. You want the set to correctly convey the scene as it is laid out in the script or by the director. Mostly this art, whatever form it takes, paintings, photographs, sculpture, is rented. There are dozens of prop houses in Los Angeles where you can rent almost any kind of art. Paintings, photos, sculptures. Generally, you can find what you need in a prop house. Occasionally, though, you need something a little more specific or special and you need to have it custom created. The other kind of art on a set is something that is specifically mentioned in a script. It can be the most important item in a script in the movie, like the blackbird sculpture in the Maltese Falcon, or the many paintings stolen in both versions of the Thomas Crown Affair, the Seurat painting Ferris Bueller stands and stares at in the Art Institute of Chicago in Ferris Bueller's Day Off, or something unique that needs to be created especially for the scene, something that helps define the setting or the character, or some key item that helps drive the plot. These key art pieces usually need to be custom made, and as an art director I would turn to an artist I know or one of the specialist prop houses. We're going to discuss that in a minute. The other set or scene that requires specific art is when the story involves an artist, the life of a painter like Van Gogh or Turner or Jackson Pollock, or an artist that only exists in the script. In these cases, there will be a need for really good copies of the famous works, 
Obviously, you can't have a real Picasso on the set, or a bunch of original works will have to be created. Oh, notes are out of order here. This, of course, can be made very beneficial for the artist selected to create the work. It's not all cushy, though. I once did a TV spot that required a young woman to create four separate paintings with a specific theme. The artist, who I knew through a friend, ended up making endless variations of her paintings until finally the director, the agency and the client were all happy. It was a long and arduous process. The other type of set that will often require multiple pieces of art that will have a theme or a look and will be sometimes created by one artist is an office, especially big corporate offices where large pieces of art are designed to impress. Think large abstract modern pieces like Mark Rothko. Hotels will also usually have similar art in all their rooms. Modern hip hotels tend to favour photographs, but they all use types of art. Let's talk about prop houses. Most prop houses carry a large variety of set pieces. Furnishings, kitchen appliances, toys, sports gear and art. Generally the art in these places is pretty generic and it works a lot of the time but you often need something a little more carefully chosen. Several prop houses specialise in art. They carry a selection of pieces of different styles, size, format, etc, etc, and because they only deal in art, you can usually find what you're looking for. In addition to carrying a variety of pieces that they rent out to film shoots, they also have several pieces by specific artists, just like a regular art gallery. They will have a few pieces on display, perhaps a few more in storage, but they will also have images, slides, prints, etc. of other works by that artist. If I or my set decorator are looking for a specific type of art, say a western landscape, we might see something at a prop house that is the right style, genre, etc. but not exactly correct. We talk to the prop house salesperson and they will show us other samples by this artist and perhaps we see what we want then. Or perhaps we commission something special for the shoot. Time will be an issue here because usually you don't have very long before the shoot date and it will often take several days if not weeks or longer for an artist to create a new piece of work and of course it will need to be revised and revisioned again and again and again just like the lady who painted the four paintings earlier. Anyway in this case the negotiation is between the art director, the prop house and the artist and every case is different. You might create a unique piece that you just rent to the production company for that particular shoot. You might sell it to the prop house who then rents it to the shoot and then they can rent it out to other shoots later on. Or more likely you create a unique piece and sell it to the production company outright as I mentioned earlier. Remember they need permission to use it many times so it's better for them to own it outright. Lots of art is needed on a film set. Almost every set has some kind of art. Spaceships and prison cells usually don't have much art on display, but there are always exceptions. So how do you get your art onto a film set? You can contact the Art Directors Guild or the Set Decorators Society. But even if you get contact information, you then have to make cold calls or send blanket emails, etc. Usually not very productive. Um, speaking personally and from other art directors and set decorators, I don't really have a lot of time to look at unsolicited pictures or um, images of your art. Your best thing, unless you know somebody in the art department, is to go online to Debbie's book. D-E-B-B-I-E-S book. Debbie's book is an online resource site where you can find the things, where I can find the things I'm looking for on a set. Medieval swords, gym equipment, kitchen appliances, oriental carpets, and art. In the search bar you just type paintings, sculpture, or just art, 
and you will see listings of prop houses that carry art and all the ones that specialize in art. They list the type of art they carry, they have website links, contact info, etc, etc, etc. Find the ones that seem to fit what you do, make a list, send them an email with a link to your website. You do have a website, right? Follow up with another email to a phone or a phone call. Try and arrange a personal meeting. It's all about personal contacts. Hopefully they'll be interested in your work. You can go there and show it to them. They might even take a few pieces that you can just loan them and they could rent out. Um, be professional in your approach. Be persistent, but not aggressive. Uh, don't show up with six pieces in the back of your truck and expect them to look at them and hang them right away. Possible, but highly unlikely. So, there we go. Um, good luck. Uh, you can see samples of my work on my film website, www.nickgoodman.com. And um, I hope you're very, very successful, and I look forward to seeing whatever your art is on a film shoot soon. Bye.